Everything I'm sharing today is a two-year-old strategy and I cannot guarantee that it's going to work in the current excruciatingly painful property market. But I'm gonna share it anyway. I'm currently staying in a three-bedroom cluster apartment and it's about seven to eight hundred square feet. And that's when you know that the rooms are quite tiny. Except for this one, this room is pretty big. But it also means that I pay significantly more than my two housemates. And that's okay because I got a very good price for this apartment. It's an ancient price because you can basically never get this price ever again in present and I'm assuming future markets. Rent is currently $2,500 and the best part about this apartment is the location. The apartment is in the east and it's about a 10 to 20 minute walk from supermarkets, shops, cafes, malls. I love the area so much. And we're one bus stop away from the MRT. The first thing I did was to seriously scroll through Property Guru every single day. Every day while having breakfast, I sit here and I browse through Property Guru. I spend so much of my idle time just browsing through properties on the different platforms because I may not believe in miracles, but I do believe that there is a possibility that a good listing comes up. And you cannot deny that that probability exists. So I scroll every day, just in case a good deal pops up. At least I'll be able to tell what's a good deal because I've seen so many different apartments listed already. And the moment I see a good one, I can react fast. Make sure you use the filters, look at the area that you're willing to stay at, and set the price range for an amount that you're willing to pay. There are certain things that you don't want to compromise on when you're looking for your, well, home. And one of it, I would say, is really location. Because you might be able to find really good prices in extremely far away locations. But if you're going to need to travel an hour, two hours every single day just to get home or go to work, then I don't think it's going to be worth your time. And you're going to be so frustrated living there. Other settings that I like to include would be the size of the unit and the number of bathrooms. Then the hard part really comes down to being very, very diligent and checking the platforms every single day. Another space that I really recommend browsing, it's a bit of a hit or miss right now, but I do recommend just going through Facebook groups. So there are a ton of Facebook groups from lease takeovers to room rentals and apartment rentals. Look them up. I'll put some of the links down below, but I cannot guarantee that they are good places to look. Facebook groups are essentially forums. People who post on these groups are usually renters or owners. The reason why I like to use Facebook groups is because you don't have to talk to an agent and the incentive for them to list these apartments would be very different from an agent. Renters who list their apartments are usually looking for lease takeovers and for people to take over vacant rooms in their homes and they usually post that with a lot more urgency than an agent. And if the lease had been going on for a long time, there is a chance that the lease terms are more favorable in terms of price since the price was set earlier. But you also will encounter some dodgy posts, so don't look at all of them. And I also did see scams on it before, so if you're gonna shop on Facebook groups, just be a bit discerning with the different posts that you're looking at. Honestly, there's scammers everywhere now. It's super irritating. I actually got this apartment on a lease takeover group. So there was a bit of miscom and the lease had already begun so they didn't want to continue paying it and they were in such a hurry to get their hands off this apartment. And the moment it was listed, I saw it, snapped it up so quickly. So the landlord had a bit of pressure from both fronts, from me, the willing party coming on to take over the lease and the existing tenant who just wanted to get out of this arrangement as soon as possible. I can't say with certainty how often this happens, but given how we are all humans and we are flawed, I, I can not see how this is possible. When you enter your apartment for a viewing, is that a mosquito? Oh my god, is that a mosquito? I'm not a fan of mosquitoes. When you enter your apartment for a viewing, make sure you're extremely warm and friendly and nice to your landlord or the agent. Just make sure that you establish a good relationship from the very start. If you're a good tenant, you don't cause trouble, you pay on time, the landlord would be pretty happy just raking in that extra passive income every month. I actually heard about this 
from a friend's mother who's renting out her HDB and she said she's been renting out her flat to the same family for what six years without increasing the rent she was very happy to brag that she's a good landlord but she did say that it's just a lot easier for her to stick to one tenant instead of hunting for a new one every single year or maybe she's just super chill so yes be kind to your landlord and your agent when you first meet them be nice and warm and friendly put up like a hundred percent of your charm does this come across as superficial maybe unless you're just so warm to everyone that you meet regardless of who they are so be nice my friends <laughs> When you found a unit that you like, you want to come across as interested but not desperate. You want to express sincerity but you don't want to give them all your attention and you don't, you don't want the landlord to know and you don't want the agent to know that you're really into the house. Express your inclination but let them know that you're still on the look and you will be able to have other options if necessary. And you do have other options. At least the ball is in both your courts. How exactly to do that? In the tone, in the words that you use, you could say something along the lines of, I am considering this place. I do like some things about this unit, but it's a little bit far from the supermarket. But the kitchen's a bit small. So just letting them know that, yeah, you like it, but not that much. You like it, but not that much. It's a bit of a game. I mean, that's negotiation all the time, right? I'm telling you, when I first saw this unit, I was pretty desperate for it. But I wasn't gonna let it show. I loved almost everything about it and I, I would have been devastated if I didn't manage to seal the deal. But in my approach, played it cool. Didn't let them know that I was into this. I had backup plans. If it didn't work out, there was always something else. The next thing I did was quite a lifesaver for me, but I hope that sharing this doesn't jeopardize the future of tenant agreements for everyone else. I'm gonna share it anyway. No gatekeeping. You've chosen your place, you like it very much, you've won your negotiation, now you're looking at your tenancy agreement. When you're looking at this contract, add this clause in. It is called the option to extend. Yeah. This clause basically gives you the same price for your unit if you choose to extend your lease by a X amount of time. So say for example, in my lease, I requested for the option to extend another year on the same rate. That is why when my lease ended sometime last year, I could basically tell my agent I would like to exercise my option to extend at the same rate. This safeguards your rent price for at least another year and that's also why I managed to cushion um, myself from the crazy rental market last year. That's a little bit more into looking at the tenancy agreements and how to read the contract, so I'm not gonna go too much into detail over there, but do ask for this clause to be added in if you can, because it was a game changer for me. Mm. This was not planned. In other unplanned things, the rental market this year has been absolutely insane. My lease is ending and I'm a little bit nervous about my next steps because I genuinely am not sure what's going to be happening. But for all my fellow uncertain, nervous, um, renting folk, CNA just put out an article today about rents in Singapore. I feel like this conversation has been ongoing for so many months. Every single day, someone talks to me about how crazy the property market is in Singapore right now. This CNA article says that condo rents went up by 3.5% just in February. But year on year, condo rents have spiked by 36.2% from February 2022. That's just one year ago. So rents have gone up 36.2% on average from 2022. I do expect my rent to go up by at least 100% um, because I got a really good rate for the area I'm staying at. This article also says that increases are likely to taper off this year as the market adapts. And Desmond Tan actually had an interview where he talked about how they have been pushing the supply of the HDBs to come back up to try and meet the demand that was delayed thanks to COVID. So I really understand where things are going and how we even got here but it still is frustrating for someone that is just trying to 
live life and survive in Singapore. It is frustrating. I think everyone is going through quite a stressful time with regard to living spaces, but we just have to make do and adapt. And hope for the best, hope for the best. Wherever you are in your property hunting journey, I wish you all the best. I am with you in this. Oh, hey, stop pushing the camera. I am with you in this and I'm sure we'll find a way.